And boxing may be the sweet science, but it's not a perfect science. More than 50 fighters have died from boxing-related injuries since 1970, and when there's a death in the ring, the survivor is often the victim, too. Case in point, Paul Vaden, a former IBF junior middleweight champion. Vaden lost his first title defense, then worked four years to put himself in position to win it back. In November of 99, he fought Stefan Johnson for the vacant U.S. Boxing Association junior middleweight title. Johnson went down in the 10th round and never got up. He went into a coma, and he was pronounced dead two weeks later. In the September issue of Men's Health magazine, Paul Vaden explains how that fight ended his career. Paul, good morning. Good morning. You replay the fight over and over, or you pretty much try to forget about it completely? Well, there's not a day uh, that, it, that I go playing the whole thing over, um, not a single day. Well, it wasn't your fault. I mean, Johnson shouldn't have been in the ring that night. You feel like you murdered him? I feel that because of the, the today I have different feelings uh, today, um, but for a while I felt that I played a key part just because the fact that he absorbed um, different shots uh, during the uh, 10 rounds of, of boxing, you take punishment and he was getting hit so at the time, but you know now I'm starting to come to grips with uh, that it wasn't. You when know, you fault. were in the ring, when he went down, he was seriously hurt? No. So you weren't conscious of raining blows down on a man who was helpless or of inflicting what turned out to be fatal damage on someone? No, I, um, I just thought that it was just something that uh, would weather itself and, and that it would, it would be a positive outcome. I was just, I'm an, I'm an ultra optimist, so I, I thought eventually something magical would happen where he would, would, uh, would come out of a, yeah. a coma. He, he, um, in the, he went into a coma for two weeks and then he passed. You reached out to his family. What happened? His um, family basically gave you stiff arm? I don't want to say that. It's just I, I, I tried to reach out to, to, uh, to the mother, and it was, uh, it was kind of impossible. And, and at the same time, I, I know, I'm sure she was grieving, so it was, it was kind of impossible to get to her. But I did reach out um, to his fiance Bonnie, and, and to this day, we have a, a, a really good relationship. The two of you stay in communication? At least three times a month, just to, I feel compelled to uh, stay in touch with her. Uh, it's just a part. I didn't know Stefan, never had talked to the individual, but I just felt compelled to speak with her because no one else was, and uh, she's a very interesting lady. You've talked to her a lot of times? Quite a bit. Why have you never met in person? Uncomfortable. Uh, still, I, I'll admit that the relationship is, is very uncomfortable because uh, the episode is, is, is such a, a negative thing that, like I said, that I play over my mind day in day out yeah. um, and it's just it, but it's it's getting better I'm able to uh, joke with her as I think you know we've we've asked Bonnie to come on uh, and join us this morning Bonnie can you come on out Bonnie Smith hello Bonnie good morning how are you Fine, thank you good morning. when uh, Paul first called you what you think well I knew that wasn't his fault the condition Stefan was in, and uh, I didn't feel any anger towards him. So when he reached out to Stefan, it enabled me to reach out to him and to be concerned about his well-being. Did you think he was hurting as much as you were? Absolutely. Why didn't the two of you, I mean, you talk all the time. Um, you shared the same grief. Um, that night is etched into both of your memories. Why didn't you ever meet? Well, first, he lives in California. I'm in here in New York. And uh, it just didn't happen until now. And I just feel that um, we have a relationship that's built on moral concern and justice. And uh, Paul's um, relentless tenacity has enabled me to pursue what I would like to do in terms of reaching out to these boxers uh, and representing them so they can have proper medical care, so they can have uh, proper, um, I'm sorry. Safeguards, it's, I can imagine. Say, yeah, I'm did, just a little did, nervous. Did, were you aware that Stefan shouldn't have been fighting that night, that his trainer had advised him not to? Absolutely not. Um, Stefan was, as far as I was concerned, in great health. And it was nothing that was seen. It was something that was internal. Yeah. Paul blames himself so much for what happened that night. Was there not even a part of you 
that blamed him? No, absolutely not. It's the sport. It's not um, Paul that I blame. Um, um, that's why I'm calling out to the Athletic Commission to change their rules and regulations and to hold accountable those people who are in charge. Um, Paul was just doing his job. And I'm calling out to uh, the Athletic Committee to um, have strict mm -hmm. regulations in terms of these boxers so they will not be injured. You ever see yourself going to uh, Stefan's bedside? I mean, uh something that uh it's going to going to take a little time uh just uh i'm real like you think remain replay it in spite of all that i'm still a productive individual i'm still doing a, a lot a lot of really uh great, uh that one of them winning a world world title and oddly enough still working with young boxers and your son is a young boxer yes he is so this isn't about the sport it's about regulating it properly yes also about healing too Bonnie, thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck much. to you. Thank and Paul, thank you. Thank you. All right, stay well.